With the new cards from Bright Light, Data Doll is a great choice for Blitz. I've been playing a lot with Data Doll, both in paper and online, and having great success with it. I have tested many items and options to bring to you what I think is the best version of Data Doll. My last iteration of the deck has over 80% win rate on Talishar. I've used the YouTube chapter features and I listed a timestamp here so you can jump to the part of the guide that you would like to. In this video I will go over on who's Data Doll, why is Data Doll a great deck right now, the Data Doll tankiness, how to play the deck, the weaknesses of the deck, items and boost attacks, and finally I will go over deck tech. Data Doll Mark II is a 3 intellect mechanologist hero, that whenever a mechanologist item goes from your deck to the banished zone, if it costs 2 or less you can put it in the arena instead. The 3 intellect drawback is countered by the ability to draw items when they are on top of your deck and you banish them. You need to reach few items in the arena and then the deck snowballs really quickly. The main thing that Bright Lights brought for Data Doll are not the items, but it's the survivability. The survivability that we get from Bright Lights allows us to play all the attack items and win the game. The main survivability cards from Bright Lights are Adaptive Plating, Mini Force Field, and Dissolving Shield. And then from Arcane Rising we have Dissipation Shield. The nice thing about Adaptive Plating is that you can use Crank items with the Galvanize ability of the Adaptive Plating when they have zero counters on it to block for 3, because otherwise they would get destroyed at the start of your turn. In Data Doll you have so much block and damage prevention included. Let's check how much damage we can prevent with Data Doll. Starting with equipment, we prevent 2 damage with the Crown of Providence, 3 from the Teclo Foundry Heart, and 6 from the 2 Adaptive Plating. Then from the items, we have 8 damage prevented from the Dissipation Shield, 6 more damage prevented from the Red Dissolving Shields, and 8 more for the Red Mini Force Field. This brings us to 33 block or damage prevention for free without using any cards from your hand to block. Additionally, you can get 5 more damage prevention for each of the plasma mainline you have in your deck because you put counters on the item to prevent damage. This brings us up to 43 damage prevention which is the configuration that you will see in my deck deck. If you would like to include the blue and the yellow of the new items, which I don't now recommend, you have 16 extra damage prevention. This damage prevention setup allows us to set up the offensive items and play the boost cards to win the game. Let's see how to play Data Doll. Ideally, you use the items and armor to survive. Hopefully, you don't have to use cards from the hand to block your opponent's attacks. You have two generic play patterns. One is if you have microprocessor and the other if you don't. If you don't have microprocessor, your strategy is to use all the three cards in hand. Ideally, you have one card for boost, one card for resources, and one for follow-up, either a boost or set up another item. First, you boost with one card that costs zero or pitch a yellow for a one-cost attack. Second, you activate Teclo Foundry Heart to get an extra resource and hopefully you will banish some items. Third, you use the last card in hand for a boost attack, a pistol attack, or if it's an item you can play it out. Once you hit microprocessor, what you really want to do with it is the mode of draw a card and then put a card from your hand on top of the deck. So you can set up a boost attack from your hand and put an item on top of the deck, so you're gonna hit it with your boost attack. And then from here on is similar to the play pattern of not having microprocessor. Let's talk about cranking. You need to balance if you want an extra pistol shot by cranking the item and getting another action point or to have items in play for longer. It really depends on the situation you are in and which items you hit. Although this deck can be really explosive, it has a big weaknesses which is variance of banishing items when you boost or when you activate Teclo Foundry Heart. In the early game you need to hit a couple of items from your boost so you can set up a good enough board to enact your game plan. Also, you can have a hand that has only items, which can happen. So you cannot block with them, you have 
you have to take a lot of damage and then try to use all of the three items to set up a pistol counter and play another item and pitch the other item. So you will have a fresh hand at the start of next turn. This will make you take a lot of damage, but don't worry, you can still get back in the game and win. The variants get lowered significantly when you get microprocessor in the arena. Currently I'm playing with 20 items and 20 boost attacks. I don't know if this is correct ratio, but it works for me quite well. Let's quickly review the items that you want to play in the current iteration of Data Doll. I've done a video on my Patreon going over all the items and why they are good or why they are bad, so if you want to check it out, check out my Patreon. But you can see in this graphic which items I do believe are great in which situation. Summarizing, I think the best Data Doll items in order are Microprocessor, Teclo Pounder, Dissipation Shield, Mini Force Field Red, Plasma Mainline, Boom Grenade Red, and Polarity Reversal Script. Let me quickly go over which boost cards you want to include in your deck. You want cheap and effective boost cards. Ideally, you want cards that you don't want to pay resources for them, especially if you're forced to block from hand, but I do not recommend blocking from hand if you can. The cards that I like to include are the 0 to 60, some zero costs with good on it effects, T-Bone, Zipper Eats, and Dumpster Dive. There is a consideration to play Twin Drive as well. The double boost can be nice, but it's a bit too resource expensive for my taste and for the flow of the deck. Let's jump into the deck tech. The base equipment, as you might have figured it out from the video, is gonna be a Crown of Providence for the head. We have the Teclo Foundry Heart for chest piece. And we have the two adaptive platings that go into legs and hands. And for weapon, we have the Teclo Plasma Pistol. As sideboard, we have equipment if we play against Wizards. I think this is good if you don't play against Wizards. If you play against Wizards, you play the busy turning model over the Crown of Providence. And you play one Achilles Accelerators over one adaptive plating. Right now Wizards have been playing some attacks for fun, I don't know if that's a good final list, but at least you have adaptive plating if you need to block one of their attacks. Let's first start looking at the items. Of course, the best item we're playing with microprocessor. These are the utility items we're playing with microprocessors. We are playing with two plasma mainline. These are really good to move the counters and make your items a bit more viable. And then the last utility item we play it is the optical monocle. I'm probably misbutchering the name. I really don't know how to say it, but yeah, this is the utility items that we play. Then, of course, we move to the defensive items that allows us to survive. We are playing the dissolving shields, the mini force fields, the dissipation shields. This is our defense. And then, of course, we need to do some damage. And uh, to push damage, we have the Teclo Pounder that you play with the Polarity Reversal script. This is really good because you can force your opponent's cards to weird block so that you will not block and you can push damage or if they block, they don't block much. Then we have the Boom Grenades. Of course, this in conjunction to Pounder and, Re and uh, Reversal script, this can push out a lot of damage and the boom grenades usually go off on the second turn you have them. We're playing only with the blue one. I used to play the red over one plasma mainline, but I think having two plasma mainline and streamline the deck is better. Then we go to look at the boost attacks. We have good amount of zero cost three attacks. We have data link that opt on hit. We have sprocket rocket that if you banish an item it gets plus one. We have Expedite, that if you hit you can put an item from your hand of zero or one cost into the arena. And you have T-Bone, that like forces your opponent to block with an equipment. Wrapping up with the zero attacks, we have the zero to sixties. We are playing with Rainbow zero to sixty. This is good for resources and also for pushing damage. And uh, we have playing with couple of one cost attacks we're playing dumpster dive that if you banish an item attacks for five so it's a one for five or a one for 
4 and then we are playing with zipper hit so this is the main deck that i like for the cyborg currently i have uh, the pistol plan if we're playing against a blocking deck we're playing only one purifier into induction chambers and then for flex items we have tick tock clock that is good against mechanologists in the mirror and a signal drummer if we play against the wizards so this is the deck i'm playing currently i have one card in the sideboard for consideration which i might play over the plasma purifier and that card is a one-off stasis cell this you can probably play against kasai yeah this is like a consideration over the plasma purifier if you want yeah this is the deck you can try the deck out and switch items around depending on your preferences i hope you enjoyed the video on the deck tag if you do please let me know down in the comments also please try out the deck and see how it feels for you thanks everybody for watching bye bye